Now let's take a look at example two, multiplying a positive integer by a negative integer. It's very similar to negative one, but we need to look at a case where the numbers are switched in their position. What is the balloon's change in elevation in three minutes? So when you take a look over here on the right side of the page where you see the picture, okay, you see a hot air balloon and it says it descends 500 feet in one minute. Okay. We're looking for the balloon's change in elevation in three minutes. Well, again, we have a word here that's going to indicate direction. Descending means going down. So if it goes down 500 feet in one minute, we need to determine how many feet would it drop in three minutes. So essentially, we're taking 500 times three. Remember that multiplication has that property. It's called the commutative property where we can switch the numbers around and we can write either number first. It doesn't matter because we get the same answer. So negative 500 times three should be the same as three times negative 500. And when we look at it from the standpoint of, again, repeated addition or three groups, three minutes of going down 500 feet, question is, where do we end up? and we end up at negative 1,500 feet. In other words, that is the change in elevation. It's not exactly where the balloon is. Okay, you can't be at negative 1,500 feet unless you are underground. So this just indicates that we are dropping 1,500 feet in those three minutes. Again, we have a generalized rule right here that tells us more about multiplication again with negative and positive integers. So a negative number times a positive number is still a negative answer. So anytime you have one of each type of number, one positive and one negative, the answer will always be negative. Example three is our last example, and it has us looking at what happens exactly when we multiply a negative integer by another negative integer. So in this case, we're going to use the idea of opposites and repeated addition both on the number line to show how we could write negative three times negative 10. You'll notice again that they gave us two strategies to do this one problem. In part A, we're going to look at it from the idea of opposites and the number line with repeated addition. So negative three is the opposite of positive three. So when we do negative three times negative 10, we can look at it as the opposite of three times negative 10. Well, what is three times negative 10? In this case, we know that that answer, based on our previous examples, is negative 30. And the number line shows us that right here. Negative 10, negative 10, negative 10. So what is the opposite of a negative 30? That would have to be a positive 30. So we're going to basically flip it around and go the other direction. Remember, opposites are the same distance from zero, but on opposite sides of zero. Now let's take a look at it from the multiplication and the properties standpoint to show why this works. Negative three times negative 10 is a positive 30. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that idea of those additive inverses again. So we're going to reset this equation so that we see it from a different perspective. Remember, negative 3 times 0 still equals 0. Any number times 0 is 0. And so instead of writing that 0 here in the math problem, we're going to replace it with the additive inverses negative 10 and positive 10. Once I've done that, I can use that distributive property again 
and do negative 3 times the negative 10. Oops, I'm going to do that in red. And the negative 3 times the positive 10. Well, we already know what negative 3 times 10 is. That's the negative 30. Okay, I got that way up here. Okay, but what I don't know is the negative 3 times the negative 10. I also do know that they produce the sum of 0. So what number plus negative 30 equals 0? It has to be its opposite. And its opposite is a positive 30. So in general, our rule says multiplication of integers when you have a negative times another negative, you actually end up with a positive answer. Now complete the triads and come back and check your answers. Use the rules that you've seen in examples 1, 2, and 3 to help you determine the sign on your answer. Notice that the multiplication piece of this does not change. The rules for multiplication here are identical um, whether we have positive or negative numbers and we just have to remember what sign goes on our answer. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. See me if you need help. And when you're ready, go on to page 42 with the key concept. Okay, so let's take a look at the key concept and the rules. If the signs of the factors are the same, the product is positive. And what that essentially means is that if I have a positive number times another positive number, I get a positive answer. That's third grade math. Seventh grade math, though, also says that if I have a negative number multiplied by another negative number, I actually get a positive answer. On the right side, we see the second statement. If the signs of the factors are different, the product is negative. So in other words, a negative multiplied by a positive will equal a negative answer. And a positive multiplied by a negative will also equal a negative answer. So what I've done is I've drawn a little chart up here at the top of your page. Okay, I'm going to put a red and a blue and a black star just kind of up here overlapping. Draw your intention. So the dot in the corner up here, that represents multiplication. If you'd rather put a little X um, to indicate multiplication, that's fine. I'm going to use the dot. And what I've done is I've shown you the signs on the integers. So the blue plus signs indicate a positive integer, and the red uh, lo subtraction looking signs are indicating negative integers. And what we're going to do is use this kind of like you use a multiplication chart. So where the positive and the positive come together, you get a positive answer. So this bottom corner of the chart is going to tell us about the answers. Likewise, if I have a negative times a negative, they also equal a positive answer. And then looking at the other two boxes, these appear where we have a positive and a negative intersect with each other, and those answers will always be negative. So if you want to draw that chart at the top of any of your papers before you get started, it might be helpful so that you understand how to multiply those integers together to get the correct sign on your answer. Now I'd like for you to try some problems on your own. Numbers 2, 5 through 15, and 18 through 23 on the Do You Understand, Do You Know How, and Practice and Problem Solving pages are to be worked out in your book. When you finish with one page, okay, so in this case the page that you're on, um, you'll see numbers, question numbers 2 and then 5 through 8. Then replay the video and check your answers before moving on to the next page. And then we'll do that one page at a time. In case you have mistakes, um, you'll be able to correct them and hopefully get your explanations straightened out 
uh, before you work on the next set of problems. So go ahead and pause the video while you're working and then come back and check your answers as you go. Number two, negative times negative times negative will always end up being a negative answer because when you multiply the first two negative numbers together, you would get an answer that is positive. And taking that positive answer times the third negative number will turn that product around and back to a negative answer. Number five is all about drawing this on the number line. Two times negative three means that I have two groups of negative three. So I'm going to move back or to the left, negative three, two separate times until I land at negative six. Number six, don't be fooled. Uh, a lot of students get fooled by this. This third choice here, anything times zero is zero. It's not going to be a negative number. Check your products on number seven. Remember, you can use your multiplication chart, but you cannot use a calculator. Check number eight. Remember that answering incorrectly would cost the uh, contestant $600, so that's going to be represented with a negative 600. And doing that twice would give you a total point total of negative 1,200. On this page, go ahead and try questions 9 through 15, and then come back and check your answer as you go so that you can see if you're doing them correctly before you flip the page. Okay, go ahead and check your answers on questions 9 through 15. Pause the video while you do that, and then when you're ready, hit play again, and we'll go on to the back page. Number 18. Because negative times negative equals positive, negative 7 times negative 8 equals 56 is the greater product. Number 19. Because Cecilia had to move back six spaces on nine different turns, then that means we're going to do negative 6 times 9 and get her position on the board as negative 54. Number 20. Remember that withdrawals and deposits mean putting money into an account or taking money out. So withdrawing is taking money out and depositing is putting money in. So we use positive and negative numbers to describe that. Check your answer to number 20. Okay, let's take a look at number 21. Um, in this mine, we've got the equipment elevator that's going down four feet per second, and it tells us that it gets a head start, and um, it's not until after 28 seconds that the miners begin to descend, and then they want the position after another 14 seconds. So altogether, the um, equipment has been going down for a total of 42 seconds. That's the 28 plus the other 14. And so when we do that times the negative 4, we get a negative 168 feet. In other words, the equipment is 168 feet below ground. The miners, though, have only been um, descending for a total of 14 seconds because, remember, they didn't get that 28 head second head start. So they're going down at a rate of negative 15 feet per second. Um, times the 14 seconds that they were in motion gives them an elevation of a negative 210 feet. So essentially, when we subtract those two distances, the miners are 42 feet deeper than the equipment. Again, remember with number 22, you're looking more at the model of the number line. So you're showing two groups of negative 35, and that lands you at negative 70. And last but not least, go ahead and check your answers to number 23. When you're finished with this lesson, you should be able to go on and do some work that goes with it. If you have questions, come see me.